history lesson of your career, my brother. Yeah, welcome everybody. Welcome everyone that signed in. I appreciate y'all participating. And Brem, man, you know, just utmost respect and love for you. Thanks for everything you've done for the culture. Um, really uh, honored to be interviewed by you specifically because we go back, we go back. And I'm going to be asking you some questions tonight too. So be prepared for that. This isn't a Crave solo interview. You're a relic in our, in, in our culture. So you're going to get some questions. Thank you, my brother. Well, let's get started, man. Tell us, where are we right now? Where is this? What, what era are we in? All right. So that's, man, you're, I'm not, don't get specific with dates with me, man. That, that's okay. not my, that's not uh, my bag. Approximate, approximately. <laughs> uh, definitely New Jack Crave right there. I was uh, just starting to paint on walls, I would say 95. Okay. And that's the, that's the airport pennant. That's my, that's my absolute favorite place to paint back in the day. So when you speak of a pennant, what does a pennant mean for those of our listeners that don't know? And what, why, is, why was that your favorite place to paint? Um, so people that don't know, but basically a pennant is just a term for a building that we got to go paint wherever we wanted, whatever we wanted. It was like a, you know, very low heat. Like you, you, you can get away with just going out there on a Saturday or Sunday and paint without getting, you know, in trouble, or, or, you know, too often. The, the chances were very low. So we got to go out there and just play. Um, and they were all over town because after Hurricane Andrew came and knocked down or dilapidate, a lot of these dilapidated structures came up to, uh, they just were left alone. And they're all over the city. I mean, you could find them all over. There was, there was North Miami, down south, uh, out west, everywhere. We all had pennants everywhere and they all had names. Um, so we're going into images, man. I'm going to stop talking about pennants because a lot of people know what pennants are already. Um, so it's, some, these are some of your early influences, right? Yeah. And what was so, what, yeah, you're skipping ahead. through, man. Back back up a minute. Just back up a little bit. Yeah, I'm trying to keep it local, but you know I had to throw some most gemios. Um yeah, it was gemios. I if I had to say one like, you know, entity in the graph world uh that, that blew my mind and like it, like changed my life in, in the early you know, obviously there's a lot of people, but it was gemios like bewildering looking graph that I just couldn't understand and I just was, was so enamored by. They kind of uh really set me off early on. Um, so that's them. Os Gemios, the twins from Brazil. Everyone knows them. Um, I mean, you know, Ma I, Miami, I, didn't, classic I didn't like, Miami. I didn't really like, I didn't really, yeah, it's Miami. So I didn't really like this when I knew about it early on. I didn't really, I, I was like, what is that dad? Why, why is that important dad? Um, over the years, you know, you understand a little bit more about what makes that so crucial. Um, it's really just the, it's, it's the, it's the framing of our city in a way that like it has never been presented before. It's not about the art piece. It's about what it's doing to the city around it, you know? So that's what it meant to me after maturing a little bit and realizing um, it really just made our, made an impression on, on the world with, with how it was presenting our city. So super dope. Um, and wh what area of Miami did you grow up in? Down South. I was, I, I was raised in like West Brine. What, and so what writers were up before you were getting up? A ton of writers, man. I'm not like, I'm not old. You're, you you go back. I think you you were painting. When did you start painting? You were in the in the late '80s, right? Late '80s, like '88, '89. Right. 88. But um, when, who who, who who like was up in your neighborhood and inspired you to get up? Um, th there was a there was a lot of writers um, down south. I think straight up bombing like Stir, who's very like underrepresented in this in the scene here. Like they, you know, down south, like where I where I grew up, Stir was just he was just such an animal like he yeah. he um you don't you don't find pictures of his work like anywhere you know it's really hard like even i went on to um you know miami graffiti because that has a really good archive and there's like two flicks um you know stir did so much uh down south with like just flares and uh, just getting up in general like it made me um it made an impression on me about how like you know it's just being prolific and getting your work out in front of people you know um so Stir was one of the main things, but you had all these different crews. Like there was so many, uh, you know, the ink has painted a lot down South, you know, um, there's going to, I think, I think I sent you a flick of Enter, that Enter blockbuster. That's going to pop up somewhere. You're going through flicks, man. I'm not even talking about these flicks. Let, let's, uh, let's go back like two or three flicks so I can talk about these flicks as we, instead of, so I can stick to, okay. So term, I mean, hand styles, there's a lot of writers down here that, that uh, early on, they, they just their hand styles, you know, that's what was fascinating to me. Terms was one of them. I know he's from up north. All of FS, like um, Oil, um, um, Clone. He went to my school, Dash. I, you know, he, he didn't bomb a lot, but when he did, his hand styles were just so wicked. 
and I feel like any any um, artist or writer should have some sort of hand style that's unique. So I throw out terms because terms is one of one of the greatest we've got. You know, big ups to Ravi. Ravi's one of my favorite. You know, in my crew, his hand styles are insane. Uh, more terms, terms. You know, I talk about wild style, and you know, for local Miami writers, I think terms. Um, he was the epitome in that in that that mid '90s era of really just like going nuts with letters, um, and I really appreciate all the BSKs. Um, I didn't get to North Miami much, but whenever I went up north, you know, that was my exposure to you know wild style, and um, you know back then at least you know we didn't have we had trains, we had the metro, we had on um, the buses, but our exposure to graph was really from either graph magazines, trains or just driving around and going to these pennants. So um, this stuff back then was like super futuristic, just to give you context. And so what year, so I see that you, you know, you've got Chrome up here. Were you, you were associated with these crews as well? Or they were just- No, nah, I mean, okay. no, I mean, I was a fan. I mean, I'm showing you stuff that just like, kind of, you know, like Car, you see Car, I don't know. Car was such a nut. Like he was, I didn't go up North very often. Um, but like I, my dad and mom would take me on a road trip to Orlando or something. And I would just, we'd drive up and there'd be like 12 highway signs. This guy was so insane. And, uh, I'm not one of those writers. that's like, you have to, you know, like, I don't really like uh, illegal is not like super cool to me. It's just like putting yourself at risk for your art to me is super cool though. You know? And this guy was like, he just was bananas. And I mean, Chrome goes without saying, um, but obey kind of underrepresented too. That guy, you know, those guys, they put in a lot of, uh, a lot of work on the highways. No doubt. Uh, down south, you see that guy? I mean, that was one of those things where I went, I went, it was, I don't remember the pennant, but it was on the east side of Cutler, of uh, uh, South Miami, or um, South Dixie Highway is what they used to call it. Um, do you remember that pennant? Do you know what I'm talking about? Are you talking about, was it by the Modern Age pennant? Is that what it was? It was by the Modern Age pennant, but no, it was like just a, a kind of a half building that was like l one floor. Yes, it, was, it, yes, it used to be, it was right on US 1. And it used to be, I forget, it used to be like a, a sound advice type of store. I don't remember okay. the name of it. I know, I know what you're talking about, though. Definitely. No doubt. Ease and ink kids. So we're, we're going we're gonna to start getting into your work. All these people are people who have inspired you. Why, why did this piece, why was this special to you? This, is, this isn't even an old piece, but sometimes you just got to make exceptions. This is my boy, Roscoe, uh, who I met in Ohio, and I went to college in, in Ohio. And again, I just was, I was, I was kind of like fascinated by his hand styles. And um, when I saw his hand styles, I just knew he was a good writer. And then I started seeing his art and I was like, oh yeah, of course, just like, it just continues to get better. So um, I bring him up because, you know, I, I kind of root for the underdog in a lot of ways. Like, you know, some people get a lot of cred, some people do a lot of work. Some people are kind of more withdrawn and just paint and do graph in like alleys, you know, that's kind of like the graph writer I was. I just like found hidden spots, went on rooftops and painted how I like to paint. Um, he's, so he was kind of like an A like is what you would call him. Like, I just met him and was like, this is me in another form, you know? So I'm still friends with him and he's in Portland, Oregon, Roscoe, look him up. Dope, dope, dope. And Lebo, one of my yeah, yeah. Miami's most renowned, famous artists for working with local musicians. You know, he did so many music covers for Spam All-Stars. He did my album cover. He did a lot of album covers. How did Lebo influence you? he's a dude, you know, he's like a positive, he's like a character, he's a charismatic entity that's, it's, it's like his art is one thing, like, and you know, what, what it is about him though, is he's a, he's a true pioneer, you know, he had, um, you know, his brother was, you know, on his thing, and like, they, they helped each other out, but he, this guy, like, really was a, a trailblazer, and, and he wasn't like anybody else that I had seen, because he just was out there, kind of gorilla, like, kind of graph, you know, kind of, just like, I mean, he probably had permission, but like the guy, you know, he pushed boundaries. He was doing really big, bold stuff. And he was out there on the street doing funky stuff for everybody to see really okay. colorful stuff, you know, yeah, and, exactly. and he made his own way in the art world. So, you know, he, he's like kind of a person that sort of, sort of set the city up. So when I was doing my thing, like live art, like with bands, I mean, Lebo had already made a lot of people understand what that was. And there was just already like kind of like an industry for it. And he gets a lot, I mean, he's a very commercially successful artist. But he doesn't get a lot of credit on, in a lot of ways. So, you know, I bring him up. Um, I have a multitude of influences. I could shout out everybody. It's going to take me forever. But I just threw Brito, or, or, not Brito. Brito too, man. I don't, I, I'm not a fan of his art. I'm a fan of his, his. Um, hustle? You know, not his hustle. I don't, I don't, it's, it's more of like, sort of, uh, 
people hate on him so much and I, and I understand why and I feel that way too because it's obnoxious because it, when you do something the same over and over again to me but at the same time he's like um you know he again he kind of made things made Miami known he kind of like put Miami art out there and he made art that was really really ha made people happy you know like how could you hate on that too much you know it's like whatever it's all good Word, so man. big ups to him even fuck it Word. Zim um Dash was the best school to go to in the 90s. I mean, I, I hate when people like are super like, oh, my school kid has to go to Dash and kids have to be a Dash now. It's like, no, but, you know, these talented kids were like all doing graph. And this this Zim piece that he did on uh, 36th Street in Alapata, I took the bus and I would see that. And he was kind of like that senior guy that was kind of like a jerk to the new kids or whatever. But, he, he you know, he, was, he wasn't mean or anything like that. But he, he was so fresh, man. Like, I, you know, I'm so grateful for like, how he inspired me and he was a really dope break dancer you know zim right are you familiar with zim i'd have to see the face yeah he's still doing stuff man he's doing like calligraphy and like doing sort of like um these nice uh i don't know pattern work so really cool nice. well for those of you just joining us we are live with crave art this is serious a miami pioneer who has just been putting in work for many many years and pushed many boundaries um just we're gonna keep looking at this work and we're gonna look into now some of your earlier years and your work when you got started oh wait you can't skip ghetto clowns but don't get to me yet look at that look at that i mean even now look at that that guy i mean chase if i had to name my favorite writer for miami i think it would be honestly i think i'd have to be chase because it's like the characters you know like the just the characters are so and you know what he was working with back then brim you know what he was doing that with you right you know like, pylons and rustos Brim, Brim, like he, when I saw his sketchbook and he was a real like withdrawn kind of humble dude. So I felt very invited into his sketchbook. And when I just started going through the pages, I was like, this is what I want to do. Like, this is it. This is what I'm doing. You know, like he's so fresh. No doubt. No doubt. <sighs> okay. This is a very must in my, in my rep, in my influence board. Tech and Seto came to Miami from New York. And again, guys, for you just joining, like we didn't have exposure to graffiti other than trains people coming from out of town magazines or um like just taking metro or going around town and these guys came in with a style that was on a standard that we didn't have in miami quite yet um and you know this wild style is, is to this day still just you know pure like motion fascinating they leave just enough detail in the, to like understand what's going on in the lettering and, and the structure but then they let go of it completely from there and um Huge influence on me going to see that up at the uh, Wall of Fame, and they're big too. Those were big pieces. There's a I think I think I sent you a Seto piece. There's a story about this stuff. Uh, whatever. So there's a Seto piece too. More ghetto clowns. Amazing stuff. This is in uh, in our in our hood. Uh, Brim and I came from down south, so this is uh, by the falls. I don't know if any of you know the Shell Lumber Wall, but that wall was probably the first time Graph got really like publicized to the southern, like down south to the main public because this was right on US one. And this wall was like running and getting high traffic and people were being exposed to like really advanced graffiti for the first time um, in Miami. And if you're from down there in that era, you probably saw this. It probably made some sort of impression on you, if you whether you went to Palmetto or you went anywhere around there driving up US1. So how has your style, as we start looking, well, here we got this gel piece too now. Yeah, man. How, how have these photos and these, uh, how has this art influenced you throughout the years? This was, so I'm, I'm sticking to like, you know, my earlier development as a graph artist. And I think every single one of these things just, you know, they had, it was just like a, a very uh, fresh sort of take on what I could do. And it was, you know, at the time it was done, it was, you know, very new. And, um, you know, it just, it got me going, like, I have to do this. I have to do my version of this, you know, I have to find my way to do this. Cause they're all very unique. You know, they're all like, they found their own, you know, language of graph and like they did it their way. And, you know, gel was mad funky, like always mad funky. And so all the ink heads were doing that mad funky. So a lot of graphers get real tight. They want to be like, ah, I have to be perfect and stuff. And some, some writers find a way to like really let go too. Um, so it influenced me on and letting me know kind of how I could do it, what I could do with myself, you know? Word. For those of you that are just joining us, we are rocking live with Crave Art. El Fresco and the Funky Monkey. We're going to keep it going. Ghetto Clowns. Word. Ghetto Clowns all day. Word. Ghetto Clowns were, a lot of those guys went to Dash. Word. Malibu Pennant. Never could 
not mention G Wiz. If you know, if Chase is the number one influence on my characters back in the day, G Wiz is definitely number two. Um, and at different times, it was straight up G Wiz, and I was like, I straight up, not trying to, but I definitely bit his his characters from time to time. This piece, though, like you know, we walk into the airport pennant, and we would only see this thing. Remember, guys, like through flicks and our homies flick books, or if you went to the pennant. So imagine you have no exposure to art like this and you go to this random ass warehouse and you walk up a broken flight of stairs to get to the third floor to be surprised by this kind of advanced level of graph. And, you know, what are you going to do as a kid? I mean, that's just, if you're into this kind of stuff, it's, you know, sticks with you. Right. And that's what it did with me. And then, you know, got to get straight to like one liner bombing because anonymous we crew, these guys were, really 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 good uh it's still probably one of my you know favorite throwies in miami it's just one line yeah, New York that's side tip. yeah that's L. that's L. oh there's the settle piece i wanted to talk about you know he killed me when i when i asked him about this piece because i was like super fan just walking up to him like settle man you know um back in the day you don't know you don't know what you did man that one piece you did at the north you know, and I have this magic in my head from like a decade and a half of just totally like sweating this piece. He's like, I was like, why did you, why did you not outline it totally? Like what made you think of that concept? And he killed me. He's just like, I ran out of paint and no. I had to make do. And I was like, no, that's it. That's not yeah. what happened. Yeah. But that's, that's just, you know, that just, that's what's great about it. Improv. Where I love this. I don't know where it's from. I'm still looking. It's one of my, it's one of those mystery pieces where I've been looking for the author of this painting for years. It's like an unsigned piece that kind of blow, blew up on the internet. So if anyone knows who did this, please send me the info. Cause I'm, I'm still looking for this artist. Um, it's just one of those unsigned pieces that kind of got out there. No doubt. So now we're going to get into your early work. And I see at this time you were spelling your name with a C you spelled it with a K. What was the difference? And we're going to kind of just go through some of the pieces as you're sharing about it. No doubt. Yeah, so um, when, go, ahead, go ahead. Oh, look, I, I bombed it Crave right next to it. And yeah, I, I mean, K. I spelled it both ways, but I was predominantly Crave with a C um, until I got roped. That wall you just looked at was on the Turnpike previous. That was like a Turnpike piece that I did um, with VIEW and, and uh, BC Crew. And what uh, did BC Crew stand for? Uh, beyond control and who was in the crew uh atomic when view and space and me nice so you have some people that have gone on to do huge things from that crew as well yeah i'm, I'm proud of them all nice. oh that's ohio i was when i got to ohio there was some graph but you know i made my i made my I made a little bit of a splash coming from miami thinking things were the way they were the yeah. same down in miami and so how has your style developed over the years and philosophy to match it? Um, style, like I, I think style is, is sort of just this uh, kind of, it, it should be an ongoing thing. You know, like I'm always progressing. I'm always like looking at my stuff. Like I want to, I want to do this different or better. I've never really settled into on anything. So I think style um, is this constantly evolving uh, process of art. And, you know, I learn new mediums i get more familiar i get fascinated by different things that happen by accident and i just kind of go with it um i don't want to show a lot of black book pieces but I, I i like this one a lot yeah you tend your your stuff is like it's kind of it's bright but it's dark at the same time you know and you twist ways and letters and you a lot of times i see you, you make your letters come alive with characters inside of the letters and the way that they you know legs and arms and eyes and mouths and tongues where did you pick up on that from? And how do you go about creating something like that? You I mean, it's, it's a hard question. You know, the, this is like, they're just years and years of just doodling and doing, you know, bad pieces and coming up with things that I do like to do and things that I like, you know, are fun. But I, I've always had like this uh, certain volume that I play with where they're like, uh, you know, I don't, I don't really know how to use it, like verbally like describe, but, um, it's it's really just all branches from drawing and doodling in my books, man. That's it's really just comes from that. And and when you were going to school, right? Because you went to an art school. How did they receive you? Did they, you know, because you were you were showing graffiti art as well? How did the school respond to that? I was uh, I was kicked out of Dash. 
uh, I almost lost my scholarship at CCAD. Graffiti was a different thing back then. This is Atomic and me at the Malibu Pennant. <laughs> uh, as I was saying, you know, Jesus was a big influence. You know, we were, we were jits, man. It was, you know, I met this guy at the Hot Wheels and I was like, you know, why are you representing baby HA crew, man? You're too fresh to be in a baby crew. And he's like, all right. And I was like, let's start a crew. And I was like, cool. And what, what is it? BC. We just started writing a BC. And that, that night, we went bombing in the crossings and like it, it was, we kind of, the two of us at that point in time were kind of at the same level in our career of graph. We were both kind of new jacks that were like getting advanced quick. And he, he's the one, you know, I started the crew, I'd say, cause I was proactive about getting him into it. Cause I was, I was following his stuff already, but then he's like, yeah, yeah, we gotta get this guy space in. We gotta get this guy view in. And then he was like, when he, he's, he gotta let him in, let's let him in. And I was like, ah, it's kind of, you know, <laughs> and then BC became kind of quickly gaining notoriety because we, we were all kind of like passionate artists that did graph, you know, mm -hmm. and um, we bombed, but we also really did pieces and we did like all, we were kind of like full, uh, we were like, you know, comprehensive graffiti artists. We kind of like wanted to hit all the angles of it and we were organized for a little while. So, you know, um, it was a good, it was a good crew in 95 to 96. It was a really, I, you know, I'm proud of what, what we did and how we, we kind of, from there, we were already like, we kind of established ourselves independently and we broke off about a year and a half in. What area were most of y'all from? Um, Atomic was from Kendall and when was same place, like crossings and uh, space and view lived in the same, like um, building development on like 117th. And let me tell you, you know, as far as just, you know, people that were really fresh space was, man, his freestyle characters in his book were so good. Just this Brazilian dude just doodling really quiet. I met him like twice or three times. We went, did productions a couple times. He barely talked to me. That was how it was. It wasn't like we were super close friends or anything. We just were on missions together. He was so good, though. So good. And we see here now creeping in for the first time as the El Fresco. Mono. Tell us about how did this concept come about and how did it end up ending up all over Miami and beyond? You know, it was a joke. It was like a, I, I had a class assignment in Ohio and we had to come up with a design with circles and this really awesome painter that I I still am friends and follow, uh, Chika Kwong. Um, he was like fresh monkey when he saw me doodling. Um, and, I, and when he gave me a compliment, I was like, oh, okay. And I, I got this charge of energy. So I decided to turning this design project via my girlfriend at the time she went and turned it in, in class and I didn't show up for class. So from the very beginning, I was playing with people and creating dialogue. I was like, cause you have to put it up on the board when you walk into class and everyone has to go, the teacher goes through everyone and just you have to explain the assignment. And no one was there when they called on the monkey guy. They were like, who did the monkey? And um, Kelly didn't say anything. And everyone in the whole class was like, who did that? Who did that? Where, who, where, who was that monkey? And then I was just, I, from there, I just went and put him on trees and it, that's the beginning of it. Now it's like a, a moniker and a metaphor for all. It's like a visual metaphor for a lot of my concepts. Yes, yeah, someone, in, someone in the chat just called it a Miami icon, which is very true. Very Dope. True. Um, that set, I don't, I didn't paint a lot up north, but this was at what, AgriPost? Okay. Yeah, it was at AgriPost. Um, and I went up there, I think with Merck. My memory, like if my memory serves me correctly, I was with Merck. By the way, shout out to uh, Merck, Sipo, Sab, Ravi, Fane, Korok, Mons, Krine. Uh, I'm going to miss people. Everybody. No doubt. Here comes Amsterdam. the monkey again, right? Amsterdam, 2002. Nice. nice. It was, um, you know, it was a solo trip I took to Europe. And, I, you know, I, I went from city to city and I just found like little spots and I just, you know, did my thing. And this was one of the first times I threw up the monkey in, you know, outside of the country. Word. And so characters, what's interesting I find about you, Crave, is you have such a talent and skill for very like detailed work, but you do a lot of very simple work as well, right? How do you different, like how do you, when you approach a wall, how do you know, well, this is how I'm gonna do this. Is this a freestyle? Are you pulling something out of your pocket? How do you approach this kind of work? I might, you know, it's really all reacting to the last thing I did. So I might get really like, you know, like tired of doing all of these, like I'll do a super wild style and then I'll be like, man, why am I like, why am I trying so hard on this piece? Like it could be fresh with the, just like, you know, the, the, uh, the simplest. So I, 
I, I kind of just, and once I do a simple thing, I'm like, nah, man, I can take this further. So it's kind of just always a push and pull. Right. Right. And Crave, M-O-K. Nah, is Trackside. Trackside's with Mons. Mons. I, Mons is a, kind of new to graph when I started painting with him, but he had a lot of the energy that I was like, you know, I was, I was sort of kind of getting more into art and whatnot. And he, he kind of like got me, he was like, you want to go painting? You want to go painting? And I was like, yeah, man, let's go painting. Like he, I, I give him a lot of credit for keeping me in, in, involved in, you know, going track side because I have a lot of passion for that. All these projects I do, I, I still, I just need to, I need to go out and do this stuff still. Yeah. So what, what's the difference between painting legally with, you know, you get paid a nice chunk of money versus just going out and just, you know, at any time and doing whatever your heart desires. Um, by the way, big ups to CP1. You know, this is his piece is behind me in my house right here. Um, it's my my wife and my former dog, Sonny. Um, the, the, you know, it's not about being illegal. It's not about, it doesn't need to be, to me, I'm not trying to impress anybody. I, I do care about the response that I'm trying to get for the piece that I'm doing. So if people know that I risk myself to do this piece, that might get the, the uh, process along. But I, what I need to do is I need to, I need to go kind of personal project out. Like I have to be like, I, I put concepts through when there's money involved, there's opinions involved. Right. So I'll do, I'll do a couple of those. And then I'm like, all right, losing my interest. Got to go out and do it for me now. And I go, it's just always, it's always been that way. You know, one thing feeds my soul. One thing feeds my belly. Yeah. And, and like in this feeling, for example, we see there's a character there. It's like, there's a whole other story going on inside of your letters. Yeah. I kind of, I trademarked that, you know, I did that. I was at a battle. We'll talk about battles I've won and lost, but I, I battled, uh, I battled, I think, you know, I battled set. It was at the point. It was like a group battle. Uh, the, the trophy went to, to Seto, but I, I, I've, everyone that was there knows that I had the crowd and I did that. I did a piece like that and it had characters inside of it. And what I was trying to do is really, you know, bring layers into the process. You know, like I, I felt like you could do more than just, you know, letters and, you know, you didn't have to, it didn't have to be so one thing. So, um, you're talking about the point, the hip hop store that was off. Yeah. Yeah. You remember that? You remember that? Of course. Of course. Yeah. I'm going to take it back. I love this simple, not for sale. I mean, that's such, a that's such a statement from someone who sells plenty of artwork and you, and you, 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 you know, you, you play both sides of the fence in such a brilliant way, you know? Yeah. But I mean, who wants to be on one side of anything? You know, to me, it's like, Dude, I do graph and I'm like, okay, I did graph. I'm like happy doing graph, but I'm like, that's not all I want to do. So I'll go out and do something that's, you know, for the world and like in a very high platform. And then I'm like, but I don't care about this. And then I have to go back out and do it for just me and for everybody that I know the culture, you know, and this to me was on the track. It was in the tracks. It wasn't that long ago, actually. It was on the tracks in, uh, uh, not Alapata, what am I, Opalaka. I went with Roscoe into Opalaka and we just went bombing and did this. And it was like not even thinking about it. And of course, it's one of my better get ups or pieces that I've ever done, I think, because it's there's an energy you cannot fake the funk. You can't you can't be in your studio and accomplish the same thing on a canvas, no matter how much you try and psych yourself up as you can to when you go out and put yourself on the ledge a little bit. And like that is something I don't emphasize i don't want my kid necessarily to go do any graffiti or anything like that you know probably inevitable but i want people to know that you should don't don't be safe and comfortable no matter what even if you're selling if you really want to do art for a long term i guess people can get away with it but not me not people like me you, you know this stuff has to be uh fascinating to you otherwise you know it's no good like why why do you not want to be fascinated by it Winwood back in 2004 with Fane Rock to the right of me. And um, yeah, I just started bringing the monkey to Miami back from Ohio. The monkey was born in Ohio, Columbus, Ohio. Big ups to HK, big ups to Nizzo, big ups to uh, everybody up there that was, um, you know, doing graph and, and you know, because I, when I lost my, when I almost lost my scholarship at, at uh, CCAD, the, the, people that were doing graph with me were like pretty intense. Like there was a lot. So they couldn't, they couldn't kind of like cut me out yet. They, they were like, you know, there's a lot of people that are doing this. We can't, you know, so it kind of saved me that it was like such a growing culture that it would look bad on the school. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. and, 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 and again, here's a representation of you're someone who can do such detailed work, but a concept so simple 
of a piece drawing itself. You know what I'm saying? With the hello, the classic hello, my name is sticker. You know, you, I feel like you just have themes for days. Everything you do, you, it's a unique theme. It's so different from your last piece. Thanks. Yeah. I mean, I don't think about it. You just go. I just go. No, and I never, I never want to stop and think about it or, or like acknowledge myself as like talented or anything like that. It's more about like, you know, this is, uh, everybody's talented, man. It's like, what are you doing? You know, like, what are you doing? No, Look, this is, this is in Pittsburgh, uh, piece to pits. I put up, uh, Havoc, um, um, Havoc was a, a dude that, that I met in Columbus that took me out there and, you know, he's still doing graph. Nice. And for those of you that's just joining us, you are live art talks with Crave Art from the Museum of Graffiti. Winwood, make sure you come down and check us out. First we're in a museum of its kind. Well, go ahead, we're, Craig. Yeah, no, we're in about 2001 with that photo. Okay. Yeah, big ups to the, the, the Museum of Graffiti. Uh, Kat, um, y'all, man, like, you know, really helping the culture here. Crave uh, on a rooftop, like I told you, man, I'm just the guy that goes up on the rooftops and like does weird things that no one might see. Um, that's the kind of writer I am. I'm not the writer that's like, I, you know, need to be on Broadway Street. I'm the artist that needs to be on on the on the highway and doing like but I when it comes to graph, like I, I like to just, you know, keep it interesting and not necessarily do it for everybody else, just kinda do it for me. Word. Word. Letters, I don't know, man. That was with Fane. A lot of stuff on like, you know, the damn wall. I don't know where that is. I think that's somewhere around there. Old school, old school stuff. Ohio. I guess we should start talking about battles now. I, um, when I got to Ohio, I was I was uh, doing pieces and and I got gone over a couple times and it was kind of like what the hell, you know? Like that piece got gone over that you're looking at right now. That was the first graph uh, magazine published um, piece that I did. I was really stoked about it and it was like representing Miami. And then this guy went over me um, and I ended up battling him on the train tracks. Um, definitely tore that tore that guy out the frame like definitely no one was going over my pieces for a little while after that that, that guy got skull bashed in the head because it was to me i was i was from a fiery place at the still at the time you know no uh, doubt and, and i even see you sent them the message one love one heart let's get together and feel all right you burned them and let them know what it is well no i did this and he went over it and i did the piece you just saw before it if you go gotcha. back one more so i did this mobius i did it it was i didn't i don't have a picture of his piece but you know you just gotta take my word for it it was like there was like three times the size of his. I did it in, you know, half the time or so. And um, definitely, definitely murdered that battle. But I'll talk about the battles I've lost too. No doubt. Again, here you go with, you know, these very simple characters, even though you have the skill that, you, like you said, comes from the G Wiz era, you know what I'm saying? Where you can be very detailed, but you come in with just some real simple stuff sometimes. I love that. Thanks. Atlanta bombing. You know, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't really go out to do illegal stuff, but if I'm in a different town and I can't find a wall or, you know, something like that, it's very, to me, that's when it's like, gotta, it's going to come up. It's got to go up. So I got to find some wall no one cares about. And that's when I, that's how I bond most of the time. I don't, I'm not really like, um, going to just do illegal stuff. Like if I can't get a wall though, it's, it's going to, it's going to happen one way or the other, basically. It has to go down and the New monkey York. keeps appearing in different places, you know? In so. Man yeah. And that's in Manhattan. Can't get that, the monkey off your the back. Problem, the problem is that it doesn't last as long. It goes, you know, so a lot of times it just gets gone over. Right. But I do have I do have a monkey still hanging up in uh, Bushwick that's been there for like four years, five years, which is pretty impressive. No doubt. I, I love can't... this. I love this picture. What can you tell us about this photo and the piece? All right. So I got back to Miami after college. This is one of the first pieces I did back in Miami after I got like a little bit more formally trained as an artist and started bringing like light and shadow more into my stuff. Um, I did this um, next to where Tobacco Road is in uh, Brickle, mm -hmm. and there was no graph in Brickle, and I did that like flared line, like that flared E. I was really proud of that E. I was like, I made my own E. No one's using this E. This is my E. <laughs> and I was, and uh, you know, and then you know, we just I got a picture of a really you know pretty lady walking up, and you know, it made a good photo. I'm whispering in the ear, no doubt. This is a uh, this is you know, everyone that's. In graph has has hit the 95 wall at some point or the other, uh, legal or illegally. This is one of my illegal. You, you know, I'm, I never got invited to. I never was. I was never one of those writers that was like, you know, getting involved with crews and like got into like big like piece productions. Um, so I did that one like guerrilla style in between like it being buffed or whatever with Mons. 
Um, yeah, I, I can see the Marley, you know, the Marley background from the one of the first major productions. I think it was the first major production on the 95 wall there. Yeah. Right. Beautiful colors, man. Thanks, man. That's at the fashion pennant. That was like a while, while after. It was like 2012 or 2010 or something. And you have this, so it's like you have a halo going through. It's like your A is going through a halo where most people will put a halo on top of the letter, right? I, I guess so. I'm not sure what I did there. <laughs> it looks like it looks like it. I was getting loopy for sure. No doubt. No doubt. And again, well, you just can't you can't get away from the monkey, man. El Mono Fresco, the fresh monkey in uh in what Fresh Prince of Bel Air throwy style. No doubt. No doubt. Love this. This was right off um 163rd Street, right? Yeah, I did that's... not know that you did it for a long time. <laughs> 2006 at the Ham and Eggery, I painted the wood pattern and then I, because this is like a clay colored wall. And, uh, you know, again, this is right out of art school, like getting like graffiti as an illustrator. I mean, I swore that was wood. Pa I thought that was a wood sided building. You know what mission, I'm mission accomplished. You did such a great job on that. Thanks, man. And so did the Ham and Eggery, they reached out to you do, for you to do that? How did that wall go down? Um, my boy Ali, yeah, my boy Ali's dad owned it. Oh, dope, 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 dope. Again, by the falls, it's kind of bright. I don't know if you can see that very yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. That's why I, I zoom in sometimes to try and catch the color, but it doesn't happen all the time. So just to see the scale, this was a three-story building here. Yeah, that's in Salem, um, up in uh, Boston. And or uh, you know, so it it's like a piece that I did during at the point and in a community that they were doing like a cool mural festival and trying to bring the neighborhood up because it was like you know one of the lower income neighborhoods with um, mostly minority people, low income, and they did a mural festival which was really awesome for that part of town. Now it has visitors coming, and that you know that that also was kind of where I. I landed on a style that I was, uh, man, I got to stick to a style. Like I got to stick to something that, you know, can be recognized. Mm -hmm. so and we'll I, definitely see, we'll see that kind of work repeat itself. Again, the monkey keeps appearing when you least expect it, you know? <laughs> you know it, man. Um, yeah, that's a big one. That's a big guy. He's got, he, last, he lasted like a day. He lasted like two days, man. I don't know. I guess, uh, I guess it was a peace wall and, I went over someone's pee. I don't know, man. I don't. I don't play that. Like I just was like, I'm, I, f I feel like doing this monkey. I went over somebody. They went over me. So no problems. You know, it's so good. Do you have you continued like Have you ever merchandised out the monkey or done anything? Not beyond? really. Not really, mm -hmm. man. I get I get bored of it when I start doing it too much. So I just take a break. That's in Little Havana. I mean, look at the detail there. Tell us about this piece. I mean, where'd you get the concept from? Well, the Marlins was doing a. Uh, project where they were trying to like do a campaign on the street to um kind of publicize you know the new ownership and what the um marlins were up to and they gave us free range they just told, said use the colors you want and i was like i'm not that into sports honestly i'm gonna do a concept called um rejected mascots these are the mascots that didn't make make the cut and they're sharing oh. a, they're sharing a colada and it, to me that's like that if you want to talk about sports like i this i was the guy that like yeah coach didn't call me so <laughs> That's how I take my take on, on it. Like, um, you see the little colada cup right there. Brilliant. So you have, you have, you have the bird over here. You have, it seemed like some drunken cat with a sombrero on over here, right? It's an octopus, Brim. It's an octopus. Uh, I'm trying to see the octopus. Break it down for me. You got the crab on oh, the right. Got it, got it, got it. Okay. You got the octopus smoking a cigar. Got it. Wow. Wow. Yo, so for those of you just joining us right now, we are live with Crave Art, aka Daniel Fila. This is our opportunity to art talk and capture Miami's graffiti story as we keep it going. Look at this abstract crave, you know what I'm saying? I'm not afraid to make it ugly, guys. I like to do pieces that I've done a lot of bad pieces. <laughs> And I think it's uh, it's good, you know. I think it's a good piece. I think it's a really good piece because it's like, uh, you know, who's that? Who's that writer that does these types of pieces in MSG? That's like really, really raw stuff. Um, he's he's a good artist too. I forgot his his name. I'm going blank. Um, 
it'll come back to me. Um, but yeah, just keeping it raw. Not necessarily trying to make sense. Now this right here, man, I got a story to tell y'all real quick. So I have an organization called Path Preserving, Archiving, Teaching Hip Hop, a nonprofit organization. And um, Crave was one of, he was our first graffiti instructor and they wanted to interview our graffiti art teacher. So we brought him to Crave Studio and the guy's looking around, I think it was CBS or NBC or one of them. And he sees all these images. And the first thing the camera guy says to his partner, he says, well, this guy is definitely not gay. And I will never forget that to this day. You know what I'm saying? I mean, uh, how, did you, how did you, where did this character come from? Where did this concept come from? And how did it keep ending up all over Miami in different places? Um, I, it was just, it was an illustration that I did when I was in Ohio. So I was in Miami for 18 years and I went to Ohio and, you know, it was kind of inspired by a girl I saw that, you know, kind of, I let pass by and, um, I, you know, I put her, I put her on a canvas and then, you know, turned it in for school project and it was up in Ohio and, you know, people were like, well, what is that? What is that about? That's crazy. Just a big butt. What is that? And I was like, I don't know, man. And then I brought it to Miami and, and. I just put it up on a wall thanks to Chad Oppenheim for paying me $700 to do that 13 feet tall on Biscayne Boulevard and 36th Street when I was selling prints out of my trunk to make it and clean carpets. And uh, that's probably the most pivotal piece in my career as a professional artist because I think the fact that it was buffed by somebody illegally was ironic enough and there was a controversy with janet jackson at the time for having like a wardrobe malfunction where it kind of threw me into the news with like j-lo and then end up making the cover of the new times channel 10 and you know we had the yellow pages we didn't have internet so people were calling my house line leaving messages at my family's house like it was weird it was just like oh after all the things i've done i paint a butt on the highway or the you know on a main road and someone erases it and now i'm getting press and okay cool and but, then Grant uh, from Mad Long, and then you know iterations of Aaron, which is the character, the name of the character, popped up all over, you know, different places in Miami. Yeah, he, came, you know, I I did it, and then someone went over me, so I brought her back, turned around like she was surprised, and then um, I met my wife, and I, you know, made it kind of like a version of it for that, and then no, actually it was Shakira. Before I met my wife, I had a fantasy relationship with Shakira right there, and that's my face on that. You know, I had to do you know, something with the shoulders there to kind of like equal it out. Um, so it's just having fun. Like, you know, every year I'd go back and change it. I really like that. Like, you know, people do murals and they walk away like I did my mural, but like who does murals and then like updates it, but doesn't tell anybody. So when next people drive by, they're like, was that there before? You really should try to have a dialogue if you can with an audience, if you're really going to do art in public places, however you want to do that. And, and, uh, Agreed. I like to... it, it, it's like Trek in the boom box, you know, every year it would get updated and just, yep. Exactly. Big ups to Trek. Big ups to all your crewmates, uh, all your, your all those MCs too. Um, that's on the. Um, I don't Winwood. know. That's in Winwood. That's in Winwood. Yeah, Winwood. Again, look, like look at this little. You know, look at this lady just chilling in her bikini inside of the R. You know what I'm saying? And yeah, the hat, the hat on top of the A. Yeah, there's a story. I think there's a piece below that I did that got damaged or I don't know. And I just I went over most of it and left that. But, you know, exactly like what I, people don't need to know all that. They just walk by that like that's kind of random that he did that. Whatever. <laughs> is this the this is the monkey now spotted again where we I don't started. I don't. Yeah, I don't, I don't take a lot of pictures of my like, you know, little like grill activities. But this is one of them like where, where I said I put monkeys in trees in Ohio. Um, yeah, I would, yeah, I still do that. I still go out and just like put like canvas monkeys up in places that are odd that, you know, you know, somebody might see it, somebody might not, but the person that does is going to definitely question what, what that's doing there and who put that there. And it's fun. We're, and we have a, we have a real important question in the audience. They're asking, are you an actual monkey? Half, half, half I looked monkey. at uh, 23 and me or, and you know, not completely. But. And so. Crave, this is another piece that really puts you on the map. I'm going to go ahead and run a video while we just talk about it. But this is the Winwood Silos project. And what can you share with us about it? Yeah, that piece um, was epic. It was right before I, you know, I, I actually was working on that with an infant at home. Um, the opportunity came about. I found that there was um, silos in Winwood that, you know, there was an open call. And I decided to... Um, go at it. I really wanted to get that. So I, I, I just went and I thought for like, I, you know, the first thing I saw when I drove by was like, man, that's, those are spray cans. Those are spray cans. Um, 
the tops, the volumes, and where it was, you know, like site specific artwork, you know, to a T on this one, you know, being that it's in Wynwood and making giant spray cans was it had to make sense. So big ups to Supermix. Um, they're, you know, young guys kind of taking the torch from their pops with this big company that wanted to give back to Wynwood and wanted to, you know, gift Wynwood. And they commissioned me with very little feedback. They gave me no direction. They just kind of chose what I concept that I presented. Um, it was an excellent opportunity. It was exhausting. Thank God I was in really good shape. Um, had a baby at home again. That was really brutal. But it was freaking still one of the things I'm most proud of that I've done in my career because it's it, it nailed exactly what we were hoping to do, man. We just kind of like gave something to Winwood for all that Winwood has given to us. And how how high in the air were you and how long did it take for you to complete this piece? Uh, the highest point that I remember uh, measuring was 75 feet, which, you know, that's not too bad, but the fact that it's on these cylinders is what's odd and that it's at a, you know, a concrete or cement factory where there's big trucks driving by on the base. That's, that's a little scary. And then the Bay breeze, you know, nothing crazy, but definitely OSHA equipment. You have to wear it. Um, exhausting. That's uh, Chris Labora. Big ups to Chris Labora. You know, Chris, he's rocking the mask for me. So, oh, look at that. So there's, you see the mosquito, you see the mosquito. Oh, I hope you, anyone see that? Well, um, there's a mosquito in the cloud because it was Zika time. I don't know. Y'all don't remember, man. The pandemic was horrible, horrible, horrible. But Zika with a pregnant wife, that was horrible too. That was scary. And I, I, put, up a little, <laughs> I put up a little mosquito to just shout that point in time. And at one point, I was going to make one of those cylinders an off can. That's how I was part of my concept. I was going to do an off can. Supermix wow. was full of it. And I, was, and I was like, you know what? Three years from now, nah. Boom. Man, big up, man. That is awesome, Craig. That is hey, so thanks, dope. man. Thank my brother. Yo, so once again, y'all are into your live with my man Crave Art. I hope you're enjoying this experience. While we're here, go ahead and drop your questions in the chat because we're going to be wrapping up in about 10 minutes. And um, yeah, Crave, so your experience here in Miami, what has it been like kind of going against the grain, you know? I mean, how do you mean? It's, it's being an artist is going against the grain in a lot of ways professionally. It's just there's no format, you know, set up for you. You got to kind of just go and figure your way out. Uh, unless you're going to go one of the more antiquated ways of like gallery representation, which is really not what it used to be. Um, when that comes into light, I don't look at, I love most of my work, honestly, guys, I look at it and I'm like, uh, okay, enough. But um, some of the pieces I've done, I, you know, I can look at it and always be like, yeah, that's, that's where I wanted to go. Um, it took me a really long time. You know, it didn't, the pay wasn't there for it, but I just, I put an extra week or so into it, which is, you know, it's frustrating. But sometimes you got to get these pieces out and like that's you know the best opportunity i had to do it so i did it um some of my peeps are like why didn't you do a background you know the, the, i wanted to put all the emphasis on this is wild style you know the way i was raised on wild style you um open format kind of just have a basic particular amount of detail you want to put in but for the rest of it you have to be open-ended and just let it go wherever it goes um which you you definitely have the risk of going ugly with it man this thing went this thing went semi viral locally here like it, it's not like um most of my posts where i don't exp i just you know put this out there but <laughs> people have been talking about it there's like over 100 comments on my post about this um and what's the concept because i mean it's self-explanatory but i did read the post as well so tell us a little bit about what you did here did you get permission to draw this character what happened no so I I actually did do the research of figuring out who owned the building, um, and I reached out to the building owner, but they hadn't responded to me in time, and I had a day off, and I needed to do something, and um, I, I had looked, and you know this guy, this guy's wall had been running for years and years, and he has mad walls, and he just he's a classic carpetbagger, man. He just he came into town and you know made a nice real estate purchase and made a bunch of high profile friends, and then just took up a lot of walls in a lot of really important areas in town and did it unscathed and got with some respected local graph writers to, you know, endorse and protect. And um, it ran for three or four years and it got toyed big ups to Anna. Who's Anna? You see Anna up there? Greed. Yeah, I see Anna. Anna. She <laughs> toyed it. And you know the code. It was toyed. So I walked up and I painted this guy. 
because I'm looking around and man, it's not appropriate for where it is. It's just not, it's like neglectful subject matter. Mm -hmm. So I made a move and within days, my inside sources were like telling me like, yo, this guy's gonna, he's gonna get that. He's gonna buff that. He called me to buff it. And I'm like, what? Don't buff that shit. Don't buff it, man. I just did it. And they're like, I'm not gonna buff it, but um, boom. It got buffed within days, but you know. But that—that's what it takes sometimes, just to make the statement. You know, it's not about for it to run; it's about the statement you're making, right? I want it to run. I but yeah, yeah, it gets buffed. All the stuff, all the stuff that you know has teeth, man. It doesn't last. It's like that's the thing about being vulnerable on the street level. Um, I see your son's name is in it, right? Big up, man. Look, I didn't even give a shout out to my, my boy, Kid Sid, the most amazing to graffiti, cra or no, Crave 2.0, the better version of me. He's so fascinating. He's like a really good artist already. And Tiara for making him. Thank you, Tiara. <laughs> no doubt. No doubt. And tell um, us, tell us that I remember the story, but tell us the story about this, this woman here and why you painted her. I was in San Francisco working with my friend Marin Conrad on a project for Twitter and I just was, you know, out and about one night with my roll dogs who are in town, by the way, and I want to talk about Miami Mural Festival right after this. Um, but I did this piece, um, guerrilla style. I asked uh, Lady Hens, like a graffiti artist or lo local artist in San Fran, where a good spot would be. She pointed me to Chinatown. And this piece was about stopping Asian hate, because I don't know if you remember, but in the news, but there was like a, a senior woman that was attacked and stabbed her. She was brutalized multiple times. This happened, this occurrence in San Francisco, which is a very forward thinking progressive area with a lot of Asian people, which is really s strange to me. So this is a shout out to the Asian community. And um, they, we fight back, you know, I, my, my son's half Asian, my wife's Asian American. So, you know, we're not gonna put up with that. That's not gonna happen. Not here, not in this country, not with me alive. So right. I'll, I did two of those in a matter of days. And uh, if, there's a, if, the, if the, the process continues to happen of Asian hate in America, that's going to be a priority for me, you know. Mm -hmm. Got you. Again, the monkey again. And now the monkey's capturing the zookeeper. And Yo, speaking I, of the I, monkey, people have, are asking, before, say, you know, you have a music career as well. Um, oh, we're going to get into that. But let me just do my one plug of the evening. I don't, you know, the Miami Mural Festival is going down. And I want you all to be aware of it. Keep your eyes peeled on Flagler Street in downtown Miami. We're bringing over a dozen large scale murals to our beloved downtown area that is completely like devoid of art in the walls. It doesn't have much. And we're about to put some really good stuff there from mostly local artists. So stay tuned. Any out, anybody out there that has a business that wants to sponsor, we sell a week or so to sponsor murals get credit for the inaugural year this is going to be a citywide event that continues to go on but the first year is the best year to be involved because you can take that pioneer credit i'm producing the event i'm also doing a large mural i'm co-producing i'm not doing it myself it's with mana um mana's you know funding it and and providing a lot of the resources so they're asking yes. when when is the event start uh there's already walls getting painted in, in right now you can go out tomorrow uh, Marin's in town with her team from Sacramento. They're going to be painting tomorrow right off of Biscayne on Flagler. And um, all throughout November, we got a lot of really dope locals involved. And we're going to do more. The open call is going to be better next year. We're going to get more locals involved. And you're, you're involved even if you're not involved. Just go paint walls. Go paint walls. Word. Do it. Word up. That's an illegal one. And you see, that's another one. I, you know, I go to city and I got to paint. And I, you know, I call D-Tech. I'm like, where can I paint? What, what's, what's not heated but it's good? What's... what's and he told me there's like a mural wall and I went and I saw a place toyed and I went and got up on it, acted like I was a professional artist, <laughs> which I am, but you know what I mean? I acted like I was a hired artist. And, and, uh, and, and speaking of professional artists, I mean, we actually start getting into some of your, some of your work here. Typho, Ravi, what up, big ups. That's a, yeah, that's in Winwood too, you know. Yeah, I want to talk about this real quick. So in 2008, I hired Crave to do the PATH logo, Preserving, Archiving, Teaching Hip Hop. And he sent me this as his first draft. I said, Crave, you know, it's cool, it's a get up, I'm feeling it, but we need something that really says hip hop, that when you see it, it says hip hop. And he gave me this look, he said, okay, I have an idea. And his very second draft came back as this. You gotta now, put me on black. You gotta I mean, put me on black. Look at that. 
it went from this right here, first draft to second draft. I Dude, mean, you know, you know how many homies hit me up for logos? I didn't know you were going to come through with the most important urban education program in Miami for, you know, you're just like, yo, I'm doing this. I'm like, that's it. And I mean, you know, it represents the four elements of hip hop. You know, you got the MC, the B-boy, the DJ, the urban art. I mean, you just did a brilliant job. And it stands, it's a, it's a piece that just stands, you know, it's not just a logo, it's a statement, you know? And I really appreciate you for giving that to Path and making that part of our, what, what can you share about that process, how you came about doing that? No, get out of here. I'm not getting props for this, man. You, you, you and Path and, I mean, Natty, you guys have done so much and you've asked for so little and, you know, true benevolence, man. You know, one of the questions I wanted to ask you is how do you defy the stereotype so much of, uh, urban youth that was doing graffiti and all types of other stuff I'm not going to call you out on and become the nicest, most benevolent representative in our culture right now. Like you do more without asking for anything back than anybody, man. And you don't, you don't, you don't need the glory. You always be like, you're just glory to God, which of course, glory to God always, but man, you, you're just, your, your humbleness is, is beyond me beyond me it doesn't i don't get it i mean you you you've helped so many people with addiction with so many kids that had nowhere to look but rap and and um uh, you know f f like sports and they just didn't have the 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 resources that you opened up the doors to completely and people that are suffering you go out you know have your way for them um so don't ask me man you're the you're the man you know i was honored to do this this is this is an illustration uh for a friend doing something great. Well, I'll, I really appreciate your kind words. I will tell you this, I'm not the man, I just work for him. And that's the, that's the way I can say it, man. I do appreciate those kind words, man. Um, you know, it's, it's hip hop is what we all grew up with. And it's something that has changed our lives forever. It's given us an opportunity to keep something going. The Museum of Graffiti has helped us document this and keep it going. And that's what we're here to do, man. I really do appreciate the kind words, but we're here to celebrate Crave Art, and I appreciate that, man. I mean, this right here, we're going on wood, right? Yeah, so wood cutout stuff is, uh, it became part of my repertoire after I did a collaboration with Surface Merchants in 2011 under the guise of um, post-graphism with Mark Mar Mike Margulies as a art representative. Who, If you don't know who Mike Margulies is, uh, his father, the family, owns probably a quarter million dollars worth of contemporary art and they offer it to museums all around the world. They have a warehouse in Wynwood. Um, so him representing us was a big deal. Alex Giannis was a, a really prolific um, pr producer of art and I, we had a great thing going for about a year before he definitely, definitely didn't do me right. But it's all good, you know, forgive, don't forget. And he put, one thing that I did get from him is the skills to do woodcuts and I, this is my way of doing it, you know, that, with that skill that, that um, we picked up, I picked up. And I believe we have, we have a few of your woodcuts. This is on canvas right here? No, nah, that's a wall. That's an, oh, in, is... that's an indoor wall. Those are my new letters. That's my what letter. What does it say? Oh. Modus. Wow. Those are my letters now. You know, I, I never, by the way, you know, some graph writers are like, like the CP who's behind me right here, strictly spray paint or whatever, but I'm, I don't, I'll throw anything at the wall to get what I want. That's um, water-based uh, spray, any mediums that I can um, accomplish the goal. No doubt. Another one of your, another one of your wood pieces, right? Yep. That's, uh, so, I'm sorry, that's, go ahead, go ahead. That's made out of a uh, pine wood that I scavenged from a building in Brickell that was being torn down. No doubt. So, Crave, tell us a little bit about your gallery. We're pretty much at time, but you know, your gallery, where it is, what work is hanging there, what do you plan on doing next in your career? And I'm, we're, go ahead. I'm, I'm staying on, I'm working with a lot of developers. They're like the, to me, they're the least evil fact, faction of the, our world because they're, they value art to an extent. They don't value it maybe enough, but they value it to an extent and they don't have power over the art so much. They're more of like, if you, if you could sell them on integrating art, they'll kind of rely on you for doing it the right way. So I'm going to stay on path commercially doing stuff with developers because I prefer them right now. You know, the dream ultimately is to, you know, just do art the way I want to do it. Hopefully it'll land in like, you know, great exhibition spaces and, 
you know, institutions, but I'll always be on the street no matter what, forever until I die doing graph, like just, you know, the way I do it, not necessarily to, um, you know, make, um, like some sort of graph career out of it, but more of like, just to show everybody what side I'm on, you know, I'm always going to like, you, you always will know that I will go out there and do what I have to do to like, make this about not just money, not just about, to me, it's about doing something that makes me feel like I'm alive and that I'm willing to put myself at risk for a concept or a cause or to stand up for the culture. And I'll do that until I die. Um, so I'll be God. And then art uh, in my studio, I, I'm dying for an exhibition, man. I've been working my ass off, but you know, it's just, it's not ready yet. Like I got a couple, I've got 10 pieces that are unfinished that I haven't published or no, 10 pieces that are finished that I'm not allowed to show anybody based on the advice from a broker who's telling me, you gotta wait, do it all and then put it out. Killing me. I really mm -hmm. want to put it out. Mm -hmm. So no, doubt. Nice. no doubt. Well, yo, Crave, it's been a blessing having you on here. Our yeah, time. Honor, honor's mine, man. I'm happy to be out here. I, I, you know, much love. Um, let's keep this thing going. Let's keep, you know, let's get let's get the Museum of Graffiti to be an accredited institution. Um, you guys are doing a really good job of keeping it pro, being serious, um, not playing politics, not, you know, it's, it's a tough job, you know, so just that consistency, that persistence is going to take y'all there. And uh, yeah, man. big up the entire museum of graffiti staff, man. And yo, thank you for your time, your contribution to our culture. May you, may you continue to bless our walls with another 20, 30 years of the monkey and all the other brilliant concepts you come up with, man. Man, I appreciate you, bro. Yo, peace y'all. Be safe. We hope to see you at the museum during our basil. Be safe out there. One love. Oh, 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 o